Hey, y'all. Hey, Nikki. Hey, Selena. And welcome to this week's edition of Extra Sugar. Season 5, episode 13 of Designing Women was squarely centered around, of all things, a string of pearls. The quick version is, Suzanne taught us how to spot a real from a fake, sort of, after she treats herself to a 4,500 pearl necklace, sort of. Mary Jo switches her $30 version for Suzanne's to teach her a lesson, sort of, and then loses it in the bottom of a salad bar. Definitely. <laughs> Shenanigans. <laughs> Shenanigans. But this kind of got me thinking about a bunch of things, especially fakes and forgeries. So here's what I think we're going to do today. Maybe. We'll see. Here's what I think. Also, you may want to be opening up your email, Nikki. I oh, have. You're so good. Yeah. So first, we're going to talk about counterfeiting. <laughs> How common, it just sounds silly to say. How I have a Christmas-related counterfeit story. Oh, it's wonderful. Maybe it fits in. Okay, good. It's, I mean, not good if you it's were counterfeit. It's very sad. Very sad for me. Oh, wonderful. Okay, well, we're off to a swimming start. Um, but we're going to talk about how common counterfeiting is, what it is that they're faking, and why it matters. And then we're going to talk about some specific cases of fakes and forgeries that fooled a whole lot of folks. Perhaps even better than Mary Jo's fake pearls and Suzanne's fake pearls and everyone's fake pearls. We'll wrap up with a game, maybe. So <laughs> we're just going to have to see. Um, Nikki, I sent you two games, so be thinking about whether you'd like to identify fake art or fake goods. Mm, um, this is tough. Yeah, and I will tell you, if, if you go with the fake good, goods one, you're going to have to kind of like not... Only scroll to a certain point so you don't see the answer between every Let's question. do the fake art then okay. to make it easier, but I'm still going to take the fake goods one after. Absolutely, you should. And we will also make these available. So if I'm too tired to do this at the end, <laughs> doesn't that just make me sound amazing? Um, or we just, if Nikki starts looking at this thing and she's like, Selena, I don't know how to make this work. Well, we can always switch and pivot. There's no... Pivot. There's pivot. There's no wrong answers. <laughs> There, except the except wrong ones. Except for the quiz. <laughs> okay. Um, but I think you'll enjoy both of them. I thought they were kind of fun. As always, Nikki, please do jump in questions. Mm -hmm. Jump in yep. those questions. Jump right in <laughs> them right questions. In, swim around in them. Skin a dip in the questions. <laughs> oh, um, so, yeah, there won't be a quiz at the end, <laughs> but you can feel free to get naked on your own. <laughs> Anyways, if you have questions, I will try and answer what I can. Okay. But you know how this goes. I also want to say that I realized this morning and like looking back through my notes, there's a lot of Dutch names in here oh. that I'm going to murder. So I'm sorry. Oh. I tried. I had Smorgasbord and Bronvensbord in the last one. That's I think made me think of it. I think I even <laughs> listened to pronunciations like me weeks too. ago and then forgot again. Well, I put it, I, I know I'll never remember. So I usually write them. You did like them. the phonetic spelling yeah, or whatever. But it's still like me. <laughs> the thing you always need to know if you're listening is I'm always trying. And many times I am failing. <laughs> the intent for both of us is always there. <laughs> so high. <laughs> but here we are. The execution. <laughs> it's just, it is what it is. Um, so let's start with five fastish facts. So the first thing you need to know, a number one there is a lot of counterfeiting go on, going on. So some estimates indicate that counterfeit and pirated goods amounted to as much as 464 billion US dollars in world trade in 2019. Oh, man. So that means as much as 2.5% of the total world trade that year was in counterfeit <sighs> and pirated goods. Oh, that's a lot. I also realized that 2019 is a long time ago. Um, I don't, I'm, we've talked about this before in these segments where we try and like do this lay of the land thing provide context i think the pandemic just really messed up a lot of numbers so we're mm -hmm. often looking at pre-2020 years that said i did find u.s customs and border protection or as we lovingly refer to him here cbp <laughs> and u.s immigrations and customs enforcement or who we will refer to as ice homeland security investigation hsi we are squarely in the government zone now sees nearly 25 million counterfeit goods in fiscal year 2022 and everything else i'm going to say is going to ring so governmentally true for you nikki the estimated msrp was about 3 billion usd the most seized items were handbags and wallets almost a third and then seized watches and jewelry accounted for the highest value representing almost 40 percent of the total or in other words 
People like handbags and wallets, y'all. It's true. They also like watches and jewelry. And watches and jewelry are a lot of money. And they tend to be more than a handbag. But not always. So, some goods are prized. This is number two. And therefore counterfeited more than others. Want to take a guess. What kind of consumer good is counterfeited more than anything else? Consumer good. See, I would have guessed either shoes or handbags. You're good. Footwear. Yeah. Yeah. That's so footwear go. wasn't included in those numbers, yeah. which is interesting. That's weird. Uh, but this this is also That's why I assumed it was wrong. Different sources. I don't, I don't know. According to Briffa, a group of lawyers who specialize in intellectual property, three of the most counterfeited goods globally by their share of custom seizures and total value are footwear, luxury designers, and watches. Briffa also did an analysis to identify the most sought after fakes in each category. So I'll name a category, and then if you want, you can try and guess the brand. Okay. Okay. So what do you think the most sought-after fakes were in footwear? Yeezys. Oh, my God. That was so good. (laughs) Is it right? Yeah. (laughs) For those who don't know, that's a Kanye Adidas collab. And it just edged out Nike's Air Jordans. In fact, that was going to be my other guess. It feels like they're really fighting for that top spot. Yeah. And then luxury designers. I feel like you're going to be good at this. I don't know. I was. I would guess Louis Vuitton. Mm. You got it. Mm. And watches. Uh, Rolex. Yeah. Mm. So, number three of our five fast-ish <laughs> facts. <laughs> Rolling right through them. So fakes are not a victimless crime. According to the CBP, again, our favorites on deck, they can pose serious health and safety risks. Mm. Especially things like medications, diagnostic yeah, for sure. tests, and masks. That's scary. That's scary. It's really scary. I remember a lot of that happening in the pandemic um, with the masks. Waste hard-earned money. So, yep. Sounds like this might be where your story fits in. I don't know. <laughs> um, contribute to the loss of jobs and support criminal activity like human trafficking or forced labor, which I don't think I ever connected those dots. No. That's kind of scary. Yeah, you always hear about sex trafficking. I don't think of them trafficking people to go work in a mill of some kind. That's right. Oh, wow. It's, yes, it's sad. So the fakes are arguably most harmful to independent artisans and already marginalized communities. So I found this New York Times article, and it spoke to how it is especially hard on Native American designers whose jewelry continues to be counterfeited despite measures like the Indian Arts and Crafts Act. It's a 1990 law that makes it illegal to market arts and crafts as Native American if they are not. Mm. Um, and... Ooh, they had some examples in that article of people getting, you know, spending thousands and thousands of dollars on something that's like Navajo or whatever, what you, whatever you have it. And then they get, put it in front of an artisan who actually knows what's going on. And they're like, oh, this is actually worth $2. Oh, or no. Whatever. I wonder where they buy those things. Uh, fairs? Oh. Or, um, probably other places, too, I'm assuming. Um, mm. Online? Yeah. That's the wild, wild west still. So my now. point was going to be yeah. that. I trust nothing I buy online unless it comes directly from the manufacturer themselves. So, like, if if you rub it on your teeth, right? Sure, whatever. Yeah, rub down my enamel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I was just wondering, people aren't still getting scammed online, are they? But then I did on Etsy at Christmas time. I did too. I know. So I ordered a pair of pajamas for someone that I love very much in my life, and was it me? No. And there's a typo on them. Oh, no. And I didn't realize it. Dolly Putin? Dolly Putin? Mm, you got it. <laughs> you got it. But there's a typo. And when I went to contact the store, they were like, yeah, this store is no longer in business. So I reached out to Etsy and I got my money back. Yeah. Same thing with uh, Casey's Christmas present. Really? So no typo. It was just like I kept getting these really weird tracking updates. And the update was like saying something. It was the same thing every time. Oh. And then three weeks passed. And I like the normally I would wait longer than like when they say the last is going to be that it's going to come. Mm-hmm. But because it had been three weeks, I was like, come on. Mm-hmm. And they had supposedly put it in the mail or whatever, like that day. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. So um, I went to their store and they were like, this store doesn't exist. And I was like. Actually, I think I tried to email them first or whatever, message them. And then, and it was like, this person doesn't exist. This store doesn't exist. And I was like, <laughs> and, but I will say Etsy was really quick. But that also, I'm sorry, but that's got me like, eh. Yeah. Uh, it'll be a while, I think. 
Well, it's so weird. I'm usually really conscientious when I order on Etsy. Like I only order from people who have big, long um, review lists Uh or really good reviews. So I think I just got desperate in this instance. I was having trouble finding what I was looking for. Are you sure they weren't pajamas for me? (laughs) Sure. I'm sure they weren't. Sure they weren't. Get these before the (laughs) brunch. But yeah, I think I just got desperate. I don't know if I ordered from someone that was a little bit shady that I normally wouldn't order from. I'm not sure. I got sloppy. Please don't take that on yourself. (laughs) (laughs) I don't don't feel bad about it. I'm really glad Etsy gave me my money back like immediately. There wasn't even a case opened. Yeah. They were just like, here's your refund. So it must have been a rough season. A whole lot of faking going on. Mm. All right, number four in these really fast facts. People have been making fakes since anything was real. So I'm paraphrasing from an interview. I swear it's just coffee. I know. (laughs) Maybe if I drank, it would help. I'm paraphrasing from an interview with Aaron L. Thompson, an associate professor of art, crime, fraud, and forensics. Sounds kind of like a cool job. Anyways, but basically, the ancient Romans ripped off the Greek art. The ancient Phoenicians were ripping off Egyptian jewelry. If it was out there, somebody was still in it, and here we are today. So people will fake anything and everything. This is number five. Jewelry and art feel the most obvious, but also fossils, antiquities, and other historical artifacts. It's all up for grabs. <laughs> so, But I also thought fossils were more real than they are. I only recently found out most of the time they're casts anyway, even in museums. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I always thought they Dang. were real, so I'm not sure... Knockoff is really going to help me. I wonder if we read, I know I read it for an episode of the podcast. I can't remember which one it was, but I was um, reading something about museums and it was um, this controversy over how uh, some museums don't label those things well enough. And that's why people think that they're. So it's actually the Natural History Museum in New York City. I think is where it was, where I found that out because uh-huh. they do label really well. Uh-huh. And then we went to Fernbank and I think it also was labeled well. But I, Kyle and I were walking through and I was like, wait a minute, this isn't like an actual dinosaur? And he was like, no, it's a cast. Like it would be dangerous to leave the fossils out in like open air for long periods of time. And I was like, that sounds like a them problem, not a me problem. <laughs> I deserve to see the real deal. You string up these you figure it out. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it I'm is the a, worst it is a little disapp- no, I mean, I get that, though. I mean, the disappointment of it. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean they should do it. Tarnish the yeah. other ones. But, yeah, it does make it a little disappointing. Thank you. Thank you for understanding. I do. I understand. It's like when I found out that clouds couldn't really be sat on. And I was sad for a really long time. <laughs> I would like to say I was at least 12 when that happened. <laughs> no, I was like three. But That's I was still so really sad. sad. I just want to sit on a cloud. Just sit on a cloud. It seems like such a good time. It does. You know? Far away from everything. <sighs> that Maybe that should be my mantra. They, like, my oh, return to yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Nikki and I have been talking yeah. about the stress. <laughs> now we need to alleviate it. And it feels like sl- sitting on a cloud is a good start. I think that's a good start. So these latter categories, the, the fossils, antiquities, these historical things, that's where we're going to go next. That is... Fakes that fool them good. So how about the case of the Fake Antiquities Gallery in Manhattan? So um, your dad, I'm sorry, I really should have looked up the pronunciation <laughs> of this guy's name. No. <laughs> my dad, Sadiq, was a New York antiquities dealer with Sadiq Gallery, and he had operated for decades in Manhattan. He claimed to have ancient items that were Anatolian, Babylonian, Byzantine, Greco-Roman, Mesopotamian, and Sumerian. Need a mummified falcon dated 305 to 30 BC? Never needed anything more. <laughs> well, he's got you for nine grand. Or how about a sarcophagus for 50,000? Ring her up. Or my personal favorite, a 1,500 iron and nickel fragment from a meteorite. Sorry, this is a $1,500 nickel fragment from a meteorite that landed in Mongolia. Sure. But he didn't have you because he was busted in 2021 for passing off mass produced objects as ancient artifacts. <laughs> In fact, they were being made right there on the premises in a workshop behind his gallery. Were the people trafficked? Uh, the people, no, I, not that I know the of. The workers, okay. But that is, I think, was some of the concern around this happening. Yeah. Is that those, th- you know, but I don't know about necessarily. Not in this, this situation case. necessarily, okay. I don't know, yeah. but I, yeah, so cannot say or Wow, die. that's wacky. 
So the district attorney actually said that Mr. Sadiq appeared to be among the biggest purveyors of fake artifacts in the country. And just operating right there in Manhattan in the most obvious of places. Crazy. And for so long. Right. 70s. It's just a long time. So anyways, so what about the guy who forged a painting to save his own life? This is where the Dutch start, so I apologize. Han von Marjorin was a Dutch artist. Nikki just fell out of her chair. Marjorin? <laughs> Majorin. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Intent is there. Let's try again. Han von Majorin was a Dutch artist. Every time it changes. <laughs> was a Dutch artist who wasn't having much luck in the art world. No one could even pronounce his name in America. <laughs> So he did what anyone would do. He forged a painting called Christ and the Disciples at Umesis as an undiscovered work by the actually famous Dutch artist, Johannes Vermeer. This one is, this is the one that fooled everyone, including the experts. It was even purchased by a prominent Rotterdam museum for about $6 million in today's dollars. This made von Majoren a pretty penny. So he started forging more works of art, including another Vermeer, Christ with the Adulteress, my favorite. This one was reportedly sold for $8 million in today's dollars to none other than Reich Marshal Hermann Goring, one of the most powerful figures in the Nazi party. After World War II, when masterpieces like these were found in Goring's collection, von Majoren was charged with essentially treason for colluding with the Nazis and plundering the Netherlands' cultural her heritage. Facing the death penalty, von Majoren admitted he was a fraud, not a traitor. According to History Collection, he proved it by reproducing another Vermeer painting in front of witnesses. Wow. Can you imagine having to do that on the fly? What a shame that he clearly had talent. I'm looking at this Christ and the Disciples painting. He clearly must have had talent because that doesn't look like an easy painting to do. Yeah, I mean, it's like, um, I think if I remember correctly, it's like he had a very specific style when mm. he was doing his own artwork uh -oh. and it was really big for like a minute and then it fell out of favor. Mm. And then maybe it's like a Thomas Kincaid or something. <laughs> Or like whatever the case is, you know, it has its moment and then people like to start crapping on things because that's what we do. Weirdly down a Thomas Kincaid rabbit hole the other day. I cannot explain to you where it came from or why, but I literally was just looking him up the other day and reading that so popular. And then, yep. Yeah, because we're a fickle, <laughs> fickle fellow. Fickle. Uh, but anyways, so he does this in front of witnesses. He makes it happen. He proves his case. Some even wind up considering him a bit of a hero because it was... He was conning the Nazis. The charges of treason were dropped, and instead he was sentenced to a year in prison for the forgeries. Unfortunately, he died from angina before he ever began his sentence. But did you hear about the time that Lincoln's love letters took the nation by storm? That sound convincing? Did not. <laughs> in 1928, the Atlantic ran a series of love letters between President Abraham Lincoln and his first love, Anne Rutledge. It sounds like they were widely supported by those who knew the president, even his own biographer, Carl Sandburg. But alas, they were forged by Wilma Francis Minor, who was paid what would be over $20,000 today for them. According to the San Diego Union Tribune, she eventually confessed after the letter's authenticity was questioned. Apparently, some of the information she used in the series was extracted from her clairvoyant mother during seances. <laughs> 1928 was a wild time, you know? <laughs> I was imagining a love letter from the 1800s. Your full colored t shirt is so pretty. I, I love almost, the way the lace clings to your wrist bone. I almost saw your neck today. <laughs> when I saw the toe of your boot, <laughs> my heart was a flutter. The forbidden land. The forbidden land of your tightly wound bun. Four score and seven <laughs> years ago, I imagine. Underneath your wrist. petticoat. <laughs> we could forge love letters. I, and mine are only get dirty from here, so I have to stop. I thought My that was pretty racy. Were, <laughs> My trousers were happy. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so I was going to take it just, just didn't scotch too far. <laughs> Let's end with a game. <laughs> so you feel good about doing it? Uh, no, no, I don't. Okay. I haven't, I haven't skipped forward at all because I wasn't sure what, it, if I was supposed to look or not. 
Okay, so we decided on the art one, right? We did. All right, I'm. Go- I can read them because I should have oh, listened to all this game. I was like, Nikki's always putting together games with like hats and paper cutouts, and I'm like, here's a link. Do it yourself. Yours is just more resource friendly than mine. Nikki's brain goes to the most challenging way to do something, and that's what I am like. The what is that? Rube Goldberg. Every activity that happens for me is a Rube Goldberg. What's the most challenging way I can do the most simple task? I mean, we'll see how this sounds at the end, and and listeners can judge which way they like better. Okay, are you ready? I am. Number one, which is the real Mona Lisa? There's a picture of the Mona Lisa <laughs> twice. It feels like spot the differences because the one on the right has a brooch. And I don't think the real Mona Lisa has a brooch, does she? So I, I don't think, think it's the I'm going to be answering these questions. I think it's the one on the left. Is the real one. Is the real one. Okay. Do you want me to hit it or are you going to hit it? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I didn't, I didn't even scroll that far. Left. That is correct. Good job. You mean it looks like it, like one of those disease pathogens? Yeah, it does. <laughs> they didn't. I feel like they didn't drive. Or like a um, what's the thing from the mummy? Uh, the scorp, not the scorpion, oh, the, the spider thing. The well, it's the scarab. Scarab. Thank yeah. you. A scare. The scarab. <laughs> you see, because I put my finger up. Okay. The real. The next one is which one is the real scream? Mm-hmm. One has a yellow sky, and the other one has an orange sky. I'm they're kidding. both screaming. They're both they're both screaming. I do like a spot the difference. Oh gosh, I'm gonna go with the, that's wrong. It's wrong. I'm going with right. It's correct. It's the one with the orange back. I did the same thing when I did it. I was <laughs> like, toss it, just roll the dice, it's fine. Which is the real number one? Oh god. You may be asking yourself, what is number one? <laughs> it squares a very artfully done. It's also known as the royal red and blue. Basically, they've taken this color blocking artwork and flipped it upside down. One way is correct, and one way is not correct. And I'm, I'm gonna pick the right one because it's called the royal red and blue, and the right one starts with red at the top. I like that reasoning. That's correct. Okay. I don't remember why I picked the one I did. I mean, I got that one right, but I don't remember what my reasoning was. I was really smart. Okay, number four is which is the real American Gothic? So um, most people will be familiar with this one because it's the man and woman out in front of like the churchy farmhouse thing and he's holding a pitchfork. I can't remember if the original woman had a pinstripe dress or a florally looking dress, Yeah, that which was is the biggest sub-in. difference here. I'm going to go with the florally one. Oh, I got it right. This is what it's like being Nikki's friend. She gets like really worried, but then she's still right. So which is the real a bigger splash? And it's basically kind of like a mid-century modern piece of artwork with a diving board and a splash in front of a hotel. I'm going to go with the the biggest difference between these two is the placement of the palm trees in the background. And I'm going to go with the one on the right because the palm trees look more evenly spaced and i'm going to be pissed if it's the other one because the other one looks dumb well, okay it's correct you've got yeah the things. other one looked off center yeah i agree and then number six is which is the real the son of man this is the one where the guy in the business suit has like the apple in front of his face and the only difference here is i'm not saying i'm gonna let nikki say even though i feel like it's pretty obvious yeah he's two different colored ties one is red and one is blue what if I had come up with something totally different than that? He has six fingers on the left. I, know, I would have been like, wow. I'm going to guess the red tie. Okay. Okay. And then number seven, which is the real, the kiss. And that's the I one. I feel like it just kissing. got really hard. Oh, the background is different. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord of mercy. This one, I just feel, I can feel it. I'm going to get this one wrong. I'm about to hit a string of wrong ones. I'm going to go with the one on the right because the gray contrasts better. I haven't pressed it yet. I haven't pressed it yet. I haven't okay. decided. Okay. Uh, but yellow, uh, whatever. We can just be okay. Oh, I knew it. Uh, I got it wrong. It's the yellow background. It's, it's, a, it's a very gold painting. Oh, this one. I think this one's easy. Okay, then the girl with the pearl earring. I think in the real picture, her earring is a dangler versus a stud. (laughs) I'm going to pick the dangler. Who among us doesn't love a dangler, (laughs) you know? 
Good job. Also, really weird movie. Sorry. I tried. I tried. That was my shot of being fancy when I was 18. And then we have the real self-portrait without beard. <laughs> they didn't really name these very well, did they? I picked the right one because the background looked weird on the other one. Okay. And that's correct for those of you who are keeping score. Which is the real impression sunrise? This is a painting with a sunrise. <laughs> and the boats are different distances apart. Part of me wants to pick the one on the right because the boat is headed toward the sunrise, like they're being impressed by it, while the other one is moving away from the sunrise. I'm going to go with right. Got it wrong. Well, uh, whoever did impressive sunrise, impression sunrise, they should have done it the other way. Cause <laughs> Just mentally. in case you were wondering, is that not Monet? I don't ever know. <laughs> I just know he does impressionism. This is where my art really falls apart. Now, number 11 is, which is the real girl in the mirror? Now, this is like some nice pop art. It's a girl looking in the mirror. I feel like I'm going to get this wrong. I'm going with the red background. Yes, and in this one, there's just backgrounds to go off of. And you were right. Good. That's by Roy Lichtenstein, just in case y'all were wondering. And which is the real portrait of Dora Maar? It's got to be right, right? Yeah, okay. Her eyes were um, not evenly distributed in the second one. I got 10 out of 12. It's pretty good. Scored better than 94% of other, art, of other quiz takers. Doing great. Fantastic. So y'all give yourselves a shot at this quiz. It's a good time. And then also the other one. Basically, it's like, how well do you know your luxury goods? I can't wait to do that one. How well do you know your Apple products? I saw the very first picture was Uggs and which one are the real Uggs. I look forward to taking that quiz. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's really funny because, like, you know, my kind of trick on those is, like, usually I find that the real brands are no frills. Mm. They're usually more... Straight lines, yeah. nothing fancy. Anytime they're trying to do something different, if there's a stud anywhere in sight, yeah. I'm like, eh. So, you know the drill. DM us, email us, or contact us from the website and find us all over the socials. Thank you for talking about fakes, 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 and other fakes. And that's this week's Extra Short.